This is the Selectman's meeting for April 15, 2010. First order of business, salute to the American flag. Do keep a sign-up sheet for who's at the meeting. If someone did not sign that, we have it up here. Just let us know so we can get your name on it. Uh, approval of agenda. Uh, I make a, approve, a motion to approve the agenda uh, with the deletion of uh, number two. Second. All in favor. Approval of the minutes of the last meeting. I make a motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Second. Second. All in favor. Signing of the warrants. Table committee report. Do we have one? Oh. <laughs> I don't know if everybody noticed or not, but the videos have been uploaded to the website. Um, like, I think there's four or five, the past four or five selectmen's meetings that have the videos there. Um, we, have, we do know that there's um, a slight lisp, um, and we're trying to identify what's causing that. Hopefully over the weekend we can figure that one out so that it's <laughs> a little more clear. Um, the audio on the channel has improved. We tried a few new things, and I, I've been watching it at home, and it appears that I'm not having to turn the TV up all the way more like half the way now, so that's a good thing. Um, and that's about it, really, unless you have any questions. I might not be able to help. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, we're going into the new business. First, we will go into open up our liquor license hearing. This is a liquor license application from John William Cudworth for Big Daddy's Clam Shack and Barbecue LLC. Route 109 in Acton, Maine. Uh, the purpose of the hearing is to have people of the town speak uh, for and against uh, this license. We also will be asking uh, Mr. Cudworth some questions and would ask you, Mr. Cudworth, to also make this presentation that he wants to present to the board. <coughs> um, so let's, could we start with that, Mr. Cudworth? <coughs> Okay, as you all know, we're trying to get a liquor license at Big Daddy's. Uh, what, what our goal is, we'd like to have the opportunity to, to, uh, to delight the opportunity to serve the people of Acton and surrounding towns. We appreciate the chance to operate the restaurant lounge to feel the prices, amount, quality of food, along with exceptional service and a clean, friendly atmosphere would be a great break. We will do our best to use local vendors and local staff. I ask you, the people of Acton, for a chance to show how well we can monitor all activities. We have a management team in the restaurant lounge area, well experienced, and also in the financial area. Um, what I've done is I've, I've submitted a card to show you the faith of how distant I am from Pat Hannon. We have no ties whatsoever. I have a copy of the Central Maine Power Agreement, the IRS ID, the sales ID, the lease, the corporation in the D Department of Health certificate. We feel as though 
we can definitely change and we and we will change what has happened in the past. I'm totally sorry for the things that happened in the past. I, I, I can't change them. We're not responsible for it. We're just looking to give a good, great, friendly place for people to eat and enjoy themselves. Try to put it all in order so you can see all the work that we've done to show that. He is not, he does not have anything to do with it. All we do is lease the restaurant. That's it. Any other questions? Not yet. Not yet. Any questions yet? No. You're o actually, yeah. You're only leasing the building itself? We are leasing where the restaurant and the lounge is. That's it. And the parking lot? Well, out front, sure. Okay, but not yeah. the gas station with its submerged tank? No, no. Nothing to do with that whatsoever. Okay. That is the problem that he has to deal with. Did you know Mr. Hannon before? Yeah. Well? We did some work in there for him over the years. Some of the electrical work. That's another thing we brought the state in. We've gone right through the place twice. Uh, Bill Perry's been in there. He, I mean, he. You can contact him. We've already got a. I've got a list made up of what what we have to do. He, he initialed it. That type of thing. Um, well, we have um, asked our code enforcement officer to do um, thorough inspections and also. To <coughs> That's uh, fine. Monitor the other ones, which I know he's been down there. He's been down there. He's gone through it with me and Bill Perry, actually. Yep. So we're yep. going to be getting reports from him yep. you know, on this. And him. I've got the reports too. We all sat, the three of us sat at a table, initialed them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we don't, we're, we're going to be getting those. I don't think they were ready for tonight. Right. It's just part of the normal process right. that we do. But bear in mind they're being corrected every day now as we're yeah. going along. Yeah, I mean, we, we must have taken out miles of extension cords and just, there was a lot of violations in there and, and we're correcting them. We want a good, safe place for the people to come to a fair price for the food, and it's good food, and, j and get rid of this little war that's been going on amongst these people around here. We, all we want to do is run a restaurant. What will you be using for um, uh, either doormen or bouncers or whatever to monitor? How will you be doing the ID checks and all that? What we'll do is we'll be checking the licenses for one thing. I'll, they'll always be, the way that I'm going to do it is if there's two entrances in there, there will always be somebody at both entrances to check the license of the person coming in if they come in and they've already had too much to drink, then we'll, we'll take it from that point, making sure that that's corrected. If for some reason something happens while they're in there and they are overserved, one, I'll be, I'm there personally, and there's two other people that are there that watch it. We watch it real close. Once, I, once it's us, what will happen if that ever happens? Number one, the person that served them will be suspended. Number two, that person will either get a ride from somebody or I'll give them a ride. One of the two. How many um, people will actually be employed to serve, uh, to serve alcohol in your establishment? Usually there's three behind the bar. So they're all going to be tips trained? Yes. Certificates? Yes. So we copies of those certificates or the tip certificates? Right. What we've got is, and also we've got a, um, there's a gentleman that comes from, it's out University of New Hampshire. His name is Bob Cohen, I believe his name is. He's going to come to us. And we're going to also do a uh, uh, food service <coughs> certified, which is, it just works in our favor anyway. It just, we, we are really trying to do it top notch the best we can do it. We're cutting no corners. We're not hiding nothing. We want it to be just a good restaurant. Now you had, when, when we had a short brief meeting before in our office, you had mm -hmm. said you were going to completely um, eliminate the old employees and hire all new ones. Have you done that? We cannot do that to which time we're the management. I mean, he wants to say we got our liquor license. At that point, we will make all the adjustments we're going to make. So how are you uh, serving liquor right now? We're, we're working under conversation of Square Point Marina. Okay. And they have a, a um, denied liquor license, though. I'm not sure how that all works. But they're in appeal. Right. So they are That's why that's happening there. So you're not, you didn't fully take over yet, is what you're saying. 
Not until I get this. Okay. At that point, then I can make all the adjustments that I want to make in there. So right now, who's responsible? As far as the alcohol goes? Yes. It would have to be Pat Hannon. Is he there? Uh, uh, supervising he has there? management in there. Has management in there? Okay. Well, uh, public. Okay. Okay. We'll uh, open up I mean, to the we public. We might have you come up. Right. Again. What we're looking to do is we we get this. We have full control of it. Then we can make all the adjustments we want to make, and we have a lot of them. So. Okay. Well, we'll do is have the public come up and make comments, and then we'll probably come up with some more questions. Right. But I'm, I just want to show you that the things that have been happening there in the past definitely will never happen again, and I'm so sorry that they did happen. I wish I could change it, but I can't. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, we'll start the uh, public speaking on the on this um, hearing. We'd ask if, if you come up, whether you're pro or con for this license, please state your name and the town that you live in when you come up um, to give your statement, please. Do you have anybody, please? Carl Hodgson, Acton. Uh, there's one question that I would like to ask this gentleman. Uh, when you're in your lease, do you have control of all of the signs on the property? Yes, we will. And, and it was two weeks ago I took down. Once again, I'm getting back to this, this some of the stupid things that go on. There was a sign out back that had made some statement about a monkey and I took all that down. Okay. That would never ever happen while I'm in Well, that's, that's why I asked the question. Yes. Yes. Will he, you control yes. all of the signs? Yes. And your lease addresses that. If it does not, we'll make sure it's in there. We've already done it. Yeah. Right. But he just wants to make sure. I just want to make sure that he wants to make sure that. I'm sure. Yep. Believe me. That's, it's, in my eyes, it's, it's embarrassing and it's wrong, and I can't imagine anybody doing that. And, and that would never happen while I'm in there. Okay. It, it's not in the least that I can see. The lease that I'm reading doesn't, it does not reference the signs explicitly. So if that is something that you would like to have in the lease, you will need to adjust that. That's fine. But I think also that what we're going to do here, we have to read, uh, you know, I personally want to read all of this information and take time and um, put questions together after I read it. So we'll probably be asking you after this meeting to come back to another selectman's meeting for, you know, probably more questions. Whatever you need. We just need time to read it over. Whatever you're going to have. Okay. I Any tried to prepare the folder that you have in front of you. Okay. Um, anybody else to speak, please? Ray Lopez. Uh, my question to you is, uh, are you going to be changing the chef? Because he is a pretty good cook. The chef? Yes. No, he'll stay. He'll stay? Okay. <laughs> Which one? Well, uh, we, we talked about making adjustments. What I meant, as far as the quality of the, can I speak? As far as the quality Why don't you come up to the, come up to the mic. As far as the quality of the food. Mr. Cudworth? Come up to the mic. Because in order for the cameras to catch what you're saying, would you mind coming up to the mic to answer your question? Okay. Thank you. No, the the, uh, the recipes and the chefs are going to stay because that's what's really going to drive this restaurant. Is they they really do have a good quality food at a fair price. Okay, so my second question to you is: Are you going to be eliminating the drive-through since you are no longer in control of that area? I believe the drive-through will be eliminated. Are you still going to have live entertainment? We'd like to have live entertainment just once on a Saturday night, just one night a week. Why the change of staff? The change of staff as far as the, the waitresses, that type of thing? Right. Just to... Not all of them. Not all of them, but I mean just better quality, better serving, you know, better services. There are a few waitresses that we would keep, but I mean certainly there are some people that, that in our eyes that, that it could be better service. Okay, so it's just a matter of uh, performance of the employees themselves. Yeah. Okay. And what's going to be your hiring procedure? The applications. They fill them out. We screen them. Look at their experience. So the, the, the typical... 
She and actually, she's the one that handles that. My wife, but and I think she's on Craigslist, something that, that along that idea. Okay. Now I'd just like to say, personally, I don't hold you responsible for what happened. Thank you. So I don't think that there's no need for you to apologize okay. from that aspect of it, and that's just my personal opinion. Well, I appreciate that. Huh? Thank, Thank you. you. <coughs> Anyone else, please? Uh, Bill Gannon, 13th Street, Macton. I just have one question. Sure. Will you have people that have surf state food certificates? Right. That are working in the restaurant, they will have them at all times, so it will be somebody that serves there? That's what we're going to do. We have a gentleman coming in from University of New Hampshire that will come that to us so we can do... Do the class. Right. 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 Okay. We will have somebody from Unit, uh, Unit H <coughs> as a course with the gentleman will come to you. You can have eight or ten people seat there. Sure. And do the certification that way. So they'll all be checked. That's right. Great. Thank right. you. I'm Deb Bedard. I live in Acton, and I just have a couple of concerns. Um, I think the speed of this lease switchover is mildly suspicious, given the down economy, how quickly this has all happened. Um, this gentleman, he admits to a past relationship with Hannon, so that makes me think that there's more to the relationship than what he's admitting to up front. He's done electrical work, so we know, you know, that they're at least close enough to be doing business together, which disturbs me given the issues we've had with Mr. Hannon. And I have to be frank that I've heard talk all over town, starting from Mr. Hannon, that he's just going to install a front man in Big Daddy's and that he'd be pulling all the strings from behind the scenes. And that's all over town, and I'm sure a lot of the people in this room have heard it. So that, again, makes me wonder about this guy here and applying for the, the uh, liquor license. That's the very first I heard of that. Um, as far as me doing work for Mr. Hannon, electrical work is electrical work. We do work for all, ki all kinds of people in many, many places. I've never, heard from, I've never heard me personally anybody say that this is a front for me for Pat Hannon. I would not be spending this kind of money in this taking this kind of time and taking this kind of responsibility to be responsible for people with a liquor license drinking, there is no way in the world I would do that for anybody but for myself. I guarantee you that. that would be, you'd have to be out of your mind to do something like that. It's for me, and it's for my wife, and it's for you people in the town of Acton to enjoy. So whatever's said, what can I say? That is not true. I absolutely guarantee you it's not true. Plus, on the lease, it says if something should happen and we leave the business, our licenses go with us. Any other comment? Question? Larry Julius, Acton, Maine. What's the uh, tax status of the property currently? Currently, the property is, is still two years behind in back taxes. The last, the, this, the, they paid the last one just before going to foreclosure, the four o'clock the day of the foreclosure was paid. Uh, so it's probably about fifth, over $15,000 still owed on that property. Given uh, Mr. Hannon's history of tax evasion in Massachusetts and in, uh, in Maine, um, I don't think it would be wise to continue to um, allow him to operate business in any capacity. So the granting of the liquor license would uh, continue to enrich Mr. Hannon through a lease association. So I would suggest that the liquor license be um, denied, not because of the applicant in this case, but because it would enrich uh, Mr. Hannon, who the selectman uh, decided after public hearing was not uh, capable or had the character to um, have a liquor license in uh, our town. Therefore, he shouldn't be allowed to be enriched by someone else having a liquor license in a property that he owns. Thank you. Thank you. I, I hear what you're saying, and it is very frustrating to have local business people not keep up with their taxes. It, it, it certainly is not good for our town. I'm not sure, Mr. Julius, I, I respect what you have to say, but I'm not sure that we have the authority to deny based on that. Title 28A is the section of the law that we have to use in granting or denying a liquor license, and there are very specific um, rules and regulations about what can and cannot. And as far as property taxes are concerned, we as a town 
I do not believe have any authority to insist that business people, we, we can't deny you a building permit if you haven't paid your property taxes. We can't deny you um, a business registration if you haven't paid your property taxes. So as much as we as individual citizens can choose not to enrich someone who hasn't paid their property taxes by withholding our business, we as a town cannot do so. Mr. Cudworth, would you address that? We had talked about the taxes and when we had a meeting in the office, what you plan on doing about the, the property taxes there, if, if anything. I know we talked about it before. Well, yeah, what we talked about was if, if, that, that, if that did become a problem to us, what we would do is I would approach, I would get a hold of him and approach him and, and say, well, we w maybe a portion of his lease would go towards the taxes that he owes. Did he agree to this? I, I haven't spoke to him. I spoke to you people about it, and I, and, and I really don't see where he'd have any option. Well, the, the lease agreement does have a section on property tax, <coughs> section 7. Landlord, that would be Mr. Hanley, right. shall pay prior to delinquency all general real estate taxes and installments of special assessments coming due during a lease term on the lease premises and all personal property taxes with respect to landlord's personal property, if any, on the lease premises. So it does say in the lease, landlord shall pay prior to delinquency. I, I'm not really sure where that leaves us, though, since we as a no. town cannot enforce the lease. That means he's going to keep doing the same thing. He's always done pay 4 o'clock the day they're due before it goes to foreclosure. Yep. Simple as that. It's really not your, you know, your fault, but the problem is if it does go to foreclosure, your business gets you know, confiscated. You don't want that to happen. So. But that's, you know. Mm -hmm not really uh, something that's going to be something you can avoid. And it's not something that we can take into can account with the liquor license because right. it is not concerning Mr. Cummings. Thank you. Uh, Bill Gannon, uh, 13th Street. There is a way that he could solve that. There is such a thing as a triple net lease where the, lease, the, the person who leases pays the taxes. And all of my businesses are done that way. I pay the taxes in the restaurants that I operate and therefore there'd be no way that Mr. Hennig could be late so that would make your job. So did we, didn't we ask that question that w if we could turn around for instance if that location was map one could we say map 1A is the restaurant? I thought we talked about that and we couldn't uh, you, do it. You can't do that. Right I mean we couldn't break that little portion away. You can't break the portion away. You surely could make payments toward his taxes if and, you want. And if, it, uh, if that's the way it ends up. But again, that, that is between you and Mr. Hannon. Yeah, it has nothing to do with the town, and it has right. nothing to do with with, with, with the liquor license. Right. Right. But right. it's an excellent suggestion. Thank you, Mr. Gannon. Right. Mr. Gannon is a business owner, a restaurant owner, so he has a good source of information about Thank it. Thank you. Okay. Any other question or comment? Yeah, we're not voting today. Okay. Okay. Right now, we're going to be taking all of this information and, and reviewing it thoroughly. We have some uh, inspections that are going to be coming in that the code enforcement officer has to give us. And we may have some, you know, after we get a chance to read and review this, we may have some more questions for you. And we we'll probably call you into a selectman's meeting again to answer those questions. As soon as we have everything we feel that's uh, satisfactory, for us to make an educated decision, then we'll put it on the agenda to be voted on. Which will have to be by May 13th. By You submitted your application on March 19th, I believe. We have 60 days from the time of your submission for us to act on it. If we do not, it is automatically accepted. So we will have to be acting on it in one of our meetings before then, and the last possible date for that would be May 13th. So it would either be the 13th or the 6th that we would be voting formally, I would assume. Are we, are we going to ask for the inspection from the fire marshal and different things like that? Yes. We have the code enforcement officer is handling the coordination of all inspections. Okay. Health, fire, and everyone will have all the reports to be able to look at. Okay. In that folder, you'll... Well, once again, like I said, we have the state electrical inspector there, so, so we know what we're doing there. I mean, he, he blessed it off. There was an issue with CMP. We've got that resolved with CMP as far as the power issue went. Um, the health is already going through there. That's in the folder also. Um, electrical permits, it's, it's pretty much all the information that I could possibly, that I could possibly give you.
I mean, we really did our homework on it, and, and we're looking forward just to serve you people. I mean, I, I see all ages of people come in there that, that eat. It's, it's, it's cleaned up a lot. She's, she spent hours and hours and hours of cleaning it, and it's going to be even cleaner than what it is. The outside of it's always picked up now. There's no more crap on the signs, and it never will be. As far as I'm concerned, this little war that went on should have never went on, and it never will with me. There's three businesses there. They have their own identity. There's plenty there for everybody. Simple as that. All people got to do is just get along, and my intention is to get along with everyone and just give a nice place for you people to come to. It's that simple. I have no ties with him. I, it, it, it's just too bad that it, it got to the way it did, and it should have never got that way, but it did. Simple as that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, since there's no more comment, the hearing part of our meeting will be closed. And we'll go on to other business. Uh, we have Pat Main to talk about landscaping. Come up, Pat. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, beginning of the week, it was this week, right, Pat? Yeah. Beginning of the week, I called Pat up. Uh, and ask him to come in to look over the grounds and come up with some suggestions and what needed to be done. I took a tour around the place and I showed him the issues I thought needed to be addressed. And we talked about uh, together on how to accomplish this. So I asked Pat to uh, come up with a price uh, to start the process. And he has done so. He came to talk to us about it tonight. And just being here earlier, um, the price originally was just over a thousand dollars. But since the uh, discussion of it with people in the town, I got the all the loan that we w would want to fix the property. That's been donated. The hay's been donated. Um, flowers from Springvale Nursery to enhance the sign area out there, as well as the entrance. We could come up with a little uh, design, maybe the 4-H club, and anybody that wants to donate uh, flowers for that would be great. Um, unless I get the rest paid, I came up with $225 from the town to pay for the seed. If anybody <coughs> wants to donate that, that'd be great. I got all the labor and all the equipment necessary to do the job and people willing to do it. And you'll be... Uh, very proud of the people that show up and, and do the work for you for free. As far as the cleanup goes, I'm going to do that myself with my guy Saturday, no cost to the town. Uh, the erosion stuff out back should be looked at. I haven't uh, um, stopped that tarp yet to maybe squeeze them a bit too, because I'm pretty good at getting stuff free. And uh, we can use that outside, it'd be nice. But uh, if you guys want to give us a go at that. I'd love to give a shot at cleaning up the town hall and bringing it up to what I think the town would be respected to, to have as a town hall. I think $250 for a town hall facelift seems more than reasonable. I figured. <laughs> but, uh, my feelings about it, Pat, yeah, but <laughs> as well as volunteers go, right now I've probably got probably a half dozen guys, you know, to show up and, and work on anybody's help would be greatly appreciated and it's up to you to give us a go and set a s schedule and we'll get at it. We also have a fleet of volunteers coming in. Um, their leader is not telling me when, but uh, to come and do the scraping and the painting on the side of the town hall. Mm -hmm. So if you were planning on doing any work on this side, we Saturday, would, we're going to need to coordinate perhaps efforts. I will try to get that gentleman in contact with you okay. so that we're not, Super. He's not messing up what you've come in and cleaned. Okay. So what was the estimated price, Pat? It's uh, 225 so far, or 285. Excuse me. I'm sorry. No, we want to do it. Make a motion. I don't think what we need to. No, we we all in agreement. Absolutely. Okay, you got it. Thanks. Okay, guys. Great. Thank you. We'll talk after. We'll get a date, and then I'll collect all the people that donated uh, materials and see if we can expedite it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Discussion of property tax deferral. That's it. That's it. Okay, number four, discussion of property tax deferral. Um, we had a citizen come in 
couple of weeks ago, an elderly gentleman who had been reading in the Portland Press Herald about a tax deferral program that Governor Baldacci had signed into law on March 5th, and <coughs> he asked me to look into it, and so I have, and um, we will need to discuss it as a board to decide whether or not we want to put it forward at town meeting. So it is called an act to protect elderly residents from losing their homes due to taxes or foreclosure. And just as a brief summary, I would encourage anyone that wishes to to read it. It is um, LD1121. And it is basically, it allows, it's a voluntary program for municipalities. So we would have to, at, at town meeting, we would have to choose as a town body to adopt the, um, the program. It allows basically for the town to function as a reverse mortgage holder. So if it has very strict guidelines as to who can apply for the program, you must be 70 years of age or older. You must have lived in that home as your primary residence for over 10 years. And you must be at or below 300% of the pro poverty line, which for a couple would be approximately $45,000 a year and for a single person would be approximately $30,000 a year. And what would happen is by entering into the program, the person would have their property taxes deferred until such time that they were no longer in the home, either from having passed on or from having sold the residence. And at that point, all of the past taxes, plus the interest that they have accrued by our own guidelines this year, is being proposed at 7%, plus half of 1% would be paid back to the town. So that's how it acts as a reverse mortgage holder. I think that very few people would wish to take part in this program. As Lorraine pointed out, most people do not wish to leave a debt for their children to take care of. Um, but I think that if we put it to town meeting, then we could find out if the people wish to have this happen or not, and it could be up to them. But it is a program that allows for ha perhaps for someone who is on Social Security and is having a very difficult time reaching their property taxes to have a way to stay in their home and the town to still be guaranteed collection of taxes later. And I think we should put it on the warrant to okay. vote on. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Put it on the warrant. So I will, um, I will ask Jennifer to post this up on the website so that... Yeah, let's make a motion to get it official. Okay, I'd like to make a motion that we add this to as a warrant article to the June town meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. So I will ask Jennifer to post this onto the website. So if anyone has any questions, there will be a link there. I will have it be something very simple along the lines of um, property tax deferral program and people can read the law for themselves and decide how they feel about it and come with their opinions <coughs> to discuss on June 13th, Saturday, June 13th at town meeting. Okay. Any, any, uh yeah, uh, just so people uh, know that the next one finance committee meeting is on Tuesday night. Normally they've been having them on Monday nights, but this next one will be on Tuesday night at 6 o'clock here at the town hall. And that will be on the transfer station and municipal management, right? Yes. Um, just a reminder again, for those of you who were here last week, I will not be here next week, so I hope that anyone that needed me to do anything got me what they needed me to do <coughs> last week. Uh, I'll be returning not until Friday of next week, so I'll be gone. To that end, the sign has been changed and it has some blanks. Please do not have that be confusing, but it says up on there, school, budget, town meeting, and then there's a blank, and then it says budget vote, and there's another blank, because I expect that we will know the dates for those while I am gone and somebody else can go put them up. So, that's why it's blank. We know the dates for what? Liz? For our next um, school budget town meeting and the date for the next referendum vote on the school budget. Okay. Okay. I'll have to take a motion. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor.